the mysteries of hell during the crucifixion of Jesus. Was the devil aware that his defeat was at hand during that crucifixion? Did he have a complete understanding of what was about to happen? Stay with me until the end of this video to discover fascinating information about the spiritual world. To answer these questions, it is essential to understand Satan's knowledge of the work of Christ. In today's video, we will carefully analyze the biblical evidence that suggests Satan may not have fully understood the meaning of Jesus' death. After the temptation of Adam and Eve, who unfortunately could not resist sin and which resulted in their expulsion from the Garden of Eden, God begins a process of restoration of humanity's original purpose. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 15, we find the first prophecy about the coming of the Messiah and the defeat of Satan. In this verse, God declares, I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He will bruise your head, and you will bruise his heel. Here, God is directly addressing Satan, promising that there will be hostility between him and the woman. But who is this woman? We will find out later. Furthermore, God foresees a conflict between Satan's offspring and the woman's offspring. But how could Satan have known this? First, he knew that this war would involve the woman, who is Eve. Second, he understood that his followers would be in opposition to the followers of the Messiah, considered sons of Satan. Jesus had already highlighted this by confronting the Pharisees, calling them sons of the devil. Therefore, Satan understood that there would be a battle between his offspring and the champion that God would send to defeat him. But after all, who would this descendant of the woman be? Did Satan have any idea? Before answering this, I invite you to leave your like and activate notifications. After a new video comes out, you will be notified. So in fact, he had no the slightest notion. Some theologians suggest that this was such a deep secret, kept under lock and key, that only the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit knew. Not even the angels in heaven were aware of it. But why would God keep it so guarded? Carefully? We'll get there soon to unravel this intriguing mystery. The fact is that Satan had no idea who this descendant of the woman would be who would bruise his head. He only understood that he would be defeated while he himself would bruise his opponent's heel. But what did that really mean? The devil was completely in the dark. Third, let's look at some evidence that Satan was completely in the dark about God's plan. The first evidence goes back to the story of Abel and Cain. When Abel offered his sacrifice to God and was accepted, while Cain had his offering rejected, Cain was filled with anger and ended up killing his brother. Some theologians suggest that this may indicate that Satan suspected that Abel would be the chosen one since God accepted his offer. Therefore, he incited Cain to commit the abominable act. Later, during the birth of Moses, Pharaoh feared the multiplication of the Jews and tried to kill all the newborn boys. The devil imagined that the Redeemer could emerge from this lineage and thus tried to prevent his birth. However, God protected Moses, but he was not the promised anointed one. Satan's third attempt to thwart divine plans was during the birth of Jesus. Herod was furious to learn of the birth of a new king of the Jews and ordered the slaughter of all boys under the age of two. The devil was desperate to prevent the coming of the Messiah, but all these attempts failed. This shows that he knew he would have an opponent, but he had no idea who it would be or what the battle would be like. He tried in every way to prevent the true Savior, the one who would defeat him, from coming into the world. During the Lord's Supper, as recorded in John 13, 2, we see that the adversary had already placed in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, the intention of betraying Jesus. If the enemy truly believed that Jesus' death would result in his defeat, he would do anything to prevent that from happening. However, he persuaded Judas to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. This betrayal happened according to God's design, but the adversary did not fully understand what was happening. Furthermore, in Colossians 1.26, 27, we learn of a mystery that has been kept hidden for generations, but has now been revealed to the saints. This mystery is Christ in us, the hope of glory. The mystery includes the entire plan of salvation, and no one really knew that Jesus, the victor who would overcome the adversary, would achieve victory through his death and resurrection. If the adversary knew that his defeat would come through the death of Christ, he would do everything to prevent that from happening. Therefore, all this evidence leads us to conclude that the adversary was completely unaware of the divine plan. At this crucial moment in our video, 
We will delve into what happened after the death of Christ. Firstly, I imagine that in hell there was a thunderous celebration. Satan cunningly manipulated the hearts of leaders so that decisions were made based on lies and falsehoods, culminating in the crucifixion of Jesus. However, what Satan did not understand was that Christ's death had already been determined since the beginning of time, as Revelation 13, 8 reveals to us. Jesus' death was the only way to triumph over sin and Satan. When Jesus gave up his spirit, Satan thought he had won a decisive victory, but he was faced with an unforeseen event. Jesus' body was not corrupted. As Romans 5.12 makes clear to us, death is a consequence of sin, but Jesus, being immaculate, was not subject to this process of deterioration. This fact certainly disconcerted Satan, who realized that something extraordinary was happening. Furthermore, the Bible reveals to us that Jesus triumphed over Satan and hell. Ephesians 4.8.10 describes how Jesus, after overcoming Satan, took the captives of hell with him when he ascended to heaven and bestowed gifts on men. This account indicates that Jesus descended to the deepest regions of the earth, where he triumphed over Satan, and then rose victoriously above all the heavens, consolidating his victory over his adversary. Paul presents us with a powerful vision of what occurred after the death of Christ. He reveals to us that Jesus descended to the deepest regions of the earth, to the deepest abyss, before ascending to the heavens to present his sacrifice to the Father. There he took captivity captive, that is, he rescued those who were captives and led them to presence of the Father. In Colossians 2, 14, 15, Paul describes this epic battle in which Jesus triumphs over the principalities and powers, canceling the written debt that was against us and was harmful to us. He completely removes this writing, which accused us of our sins and publicly strips spiritual powers, exposing them to contempt, triumphing over them on the cross. During this time in the spiritual world, Jesus, with his soul and spirit, descended into Hades, where he waged war against Satan. As Satan celebrated his supposed victory, he noticed a light approaching and was terrified to see Jesus arriving. Jesus took the keys of Hades and death from the hands of the devil, overcoming him and taking the believers who were there into the presence of God. Paul uses the figure of the general, or even Caesar, who showed his victory by entering Rome with his enemies in chains to illustrate Jesus' triumph over spiritual powers on the cross. Thus, Hades, who initially celebrated, realized that he was before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and ended up defeated by him who rescued his followers and led them to the presence of God. But the story doesn't end here. Jesus even defeated death itself, which was the adversary's main weapon. When Jesus was resurrected, as 1 Corinthians 15, 55, 57 states, O death, where is your sting? Where, O death, is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Satan had defeated Adam, the first man, when he led him into sin, resulting in Adam and Eve being expelled from the Garden of Eden and experiencing death. However, when Jesus was resurrected, he completed the work, providing the opportunity for humanity to return to the presence of God. One day, at the restoration of all things in the New Jerusalem, we will have the right to eat from the tree of life again, for Jesus has conquered death. Hallelujah! O death, where is your victory? Where is your sting, O death? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Thank God, who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Dear ones, Jesus conquered death, and because he was resurrected, when we hear the sound of the trumpet, the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive will be caught up with him on high. Oh, glory to God. He is good, the opponent lost. He had no idea the whole time. He was mistaken, thinking that by killing Jesus, he would prevent his victory. However, it was through death and resurrection that not only was the adversary defeated, but death itself was defeated. How wonderful this is, only the almighty Jesus could overcome death. And not only did he win, but he also gave us the promise of eternal life. What a glorious hope we have in Christ. So, dear friends, always remember, no matter how dark the days may seem, no matter how strong the adversary may seem, in Christ we are assured of victory. He is our Savior, our Redeemer, and our resurrected King. So, if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, 
Take advantage of it right now and click the subscribe button below. Don't miss the opportunity to be part of this community of faith and biblical knowledge. And don't forget to leave your comment sharing your reflections on Jesus' victory over death. Your opinion is very valuable to us and enriches our discussions even further. Keep following our videos for more inspiring and uplifting content. Until next time, and may the peace and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ always be with you. Amen.